Welcome to the Sharp 600, brought to you by Covers.com. I'm Rob Cressy, and I'm super excited to be jamming with you. Joining me on today's show to get down about some MLB season win totals future action is Andrew Cayley. But first, I want to talk a little bit about some more live betting opportunities, more specifically, something I took advantage of on Sunday during the Lakers-Celtics matchup. Heading into the game, I actually liked the Celtics side of things. Lakers were seven-point favorites, and I saw a stat that was like, Brad Stevens in this situation where they are this heavy of an underdog is hitting, it was something like 55 or 63%. Uh, so I liked the Celtics, but didn't get down on the action because I saw some conflicting reports around some other stuff. So I'm leaning into it being like, all right, well, I'm going to look to see, do the Celtics get down where I might be able to get a few more points than seven. So as the game's going on, uh, it's a close contest the entire way. And we get to the third quarter, and the Celtics actually go up seven on the Lakers. And just like that, I see an opportunity. I go to the live betting lines, and I see Lakers minus one and a half, minus 116. And boom, I pounced on it. Even though I liked the Celtics side of things, I saw value in a heavy favorite who right now is down. And I know in the NBA, there's the opportunity to have huge swings just like that. I mean, they could shoot and score three three-pointers, and just like that, they're now tied or up two points. And as fortune would have it, what ended up happening, the Lakers narrowed that lead down, ended up taking the lead, ended up winning by two points. I ended up cashing in my bet. And what I wanted to do was – Make sure that I made you aware once again of the live betting opportunities that are out there. If we remember the formula that we talked about during the NFL season, we we're looking for instances in which a favorite was down early. And with that, you might be able to get a team like the Chiefs who would be at minus seven. Maybe that number is at minus five or minus four and a half after they get down early. This is a perfect example of it. On the flip side, I was actually also looking to see, oh, could I get a little bit more value on the Celtics in the event that they were down? So those are two instances, both on the favorite and the underdog, that I want you to make or I want you to be aware of as I've seen a lot more profit on the live betting side of things than I see in the pregame lines. So I would love to hear from you. What's your live betting action looking like right now? Are you seeing similar success or are you even thinking about this? Is this awareness for you? You can hit me up on Twitter at Rob Cressy and let me know how you're getting down. And joining me on today's show to jam about some MLB win totals and futures is senior publishing editor from covers.com, Andrew Cayley. You can follow him on Twitter at covers underscore Kaylee and that's with a C Andrew great to have you back on the show I'm glad to be back thanks for having me I am a baseball nerd through and through so I'm super pumped to be on here for this episode so to help frame our current situation you are wearing a Blue Jays jersey who is that of it's a retro George Bell jersey so um, uh, I got this actually this summer, so I'm pretty pretty jacked to be wearing it. It should be a good year for the Blue Jays. Put it straight out there, I am a big Blue Jays fan. A lot of a lot of analysts don't like admitting that they're a fan of teams. I'll put it out there though, so just so everybody knows, all my analysis comes with a a Blue Jays bias. Don't don't follow me on anything Blue Jays based. Everything else is fine though. Yeah, and you guys have all that controversy in Toronto right now of not being on the MLB extra innings package because there's some Canada only uh, oh, yeah. sports net thing that you guys are on that they're like, no, you can't have this, whatever that means. Interesting. We don't get this see, uh, up in Canada. We don't know. We don't even understand that controversy. All the games are broadcast by uh, Rogers Sports Net up here, which uh, is the corporation, which of course owns the team as well. So they obviously are possessive over her property, I guess. I don't, I, we, didn't, we haven't heard that up here. So, Nonetheless, I am going hard in the paint by rocking a Cleveland Indians Roger Dorn jersey. One of the teams <laughs> that we are going to be jamming about on season win totals is 
the Cleveland Indians. But what I want to start about talking first is our process for evaluating win totals and futures, as well as bankroll management, because I really enjoy futures and win totals because it gives me an opportunity to casually follow teams throughout the entire season. And I think yeah. baseball is a perfect example. It's a 120 month season and it's really long. <laughs> so I was like, all right, when, when the records are like 17 and nine, how am I going to get juiced up if I'm not throwing jelly beans on every single game? And <laughs> casually you're like, Oh, I've got the Indians or something. You're like, I can just root for them throughout the season. The challenge, of course, being with so many teams, you don't want to be tying up your bankroll. Certainly, I do a per-unit bet. So I'm betting one unit on all these, but March Madness is coming up, um, mm -hmm. football futures, all this stuff. You don't want to tie up too much bankroll. So what is your thought process for how you evaluate and lay down action on MLB futures? When it comes to laying down the action itself, I still, I still stick to a one-unit um, one policy for myself you could be tempted to put more than one unit because this is a long-term investment. Like you said, the, the markets will close on opening day and you have to sit there and hold that ticket for eight, eight plus months. It won't cash out until October. And you, if you, if you're betting the pirates to go over their win total and they start by losing 20 of 25 games, you got to sit there and look at that loser for a long time. So I would say be prepared to um, wait out your investment and still at the same time, not thinking, think too much about having to make it a larger investment just because of that length of time. It's still just a regular bet. It's still, we're still getting the regular juice for the most part on both sides on the overs and unders. We're getting minus 110 on both sides for the most part. So it's not something you should be putting anything extra on, I would say. And when it comes to evaluating them, season win totals are a lot of fun. They're a, they're a lot of fun. They, they used to come out, like back in the day when, when props and stuff like this were started coming out, it, it started as a really sharp bet. Like sharps would hit up these season win totals all the time. But then over time, it became more of a public bet because sharps didn't want to like tie up their funds for – long periods of time so they're just like that's kind of not something i want to do so but the public it's a great fans of teams love cheering on their team all season long and having that added incentive like you said is just it's just a fun way it's a fun public bet that's where most of the money comes from now is is public betting but that said uh it's a lot of numbers to put out there for books so uh i think there's value to be had especially with the way that major league baseball is right now Teams are either you either have there's two types of teams. You're either going for it or you're not. And the teams that aren't are overwhelming are the overwhelming majority in the league right now. And that creates some values for the high end and low end teams. I think high end teams are gonna get high numbers, but they're not high enough. And the low end teams are gonna get low numbers and they're not low enough. So there's definitely value to be found out there. Yeah, I agree 100%. I do this certainly on the fun side of things. A lot can change in between now and then, but it's just an easy way for me to follow baseball via the ticker. You're rooting for a team. You're like, all right, let's do it. Uh, I typically don't put much action on other futures in terms of World Series. I think the only one that I would consider is winning the division. I'm not mm -hmm. doing MVP stuff. Because the season's so long, there's so many variables that go into it. I just don't find from a strategic value standpoint that it's really worth my time and energy or bankroll to be projecting some of these uh, non-win totals futures because it's just not worth it for me. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, too. I, I like the divisions as well, except this year, as I said, it's, it's more of the same. Like the Yankees, for example, are minus 700 to win the AL East. And not even not even the Red Sox really seem like they're going to challenge them this year. Hopefully the Blue Jays do a little bit. But there's it's hard to find that value. The, the Astros are are minus almost 300 favorites, three to one. Or, sorry, not three to one. Minus 300 favorites to win uh, the West. But who, we can get more into the Astros a little more later. But <laughs> so let's actually let's actually start with that because yeah. we can talk about the Astros and then I've got two bets that I've already made from the AL West. So. Okay. I mentioned this actually in my intro of my previous episode of sports betting karma, 
right now, like all of the action is on the under for the Astros <laughs> because everyone's like, oh my God, I hate the Astros are the worst. <laughs> I think right now we're looking at a 94 and a half win total. My very first thought was, should I be betting the Astros? Because they're a team who is so good. Like, remember, they're a World Series favorite. 94 and a half, that is nothing in the grand scheme of things. We're going to talk about the A's, who have won 97 games in each of the last two seasons. So we're putting that into perspective right there. There seems like a ton of value on the Astros, but one – what is your sports betting karma going to look like if you're telling the sports betting gods, you're like, thank you for that value. I'm going to take the Astros. I don't know if I want to get down with that. I am, I am, I don't know how to put this. I don't know where to begin with the Astros. I am so anti Astros this year. Uh, it's weird to be a Blue Jays fan and not hate a team more than the Yankees and Red Sox. Like I hate the Yankees and Red Sox, but this it, it's kind of fun though at the same time like we have a real villain again in sports like they're not they're I wish they went full wrestler with it though they really should have gone full full heel turn they've kind of done this like half ass crappy apology from everybody and now they don't like people saying things like I mean, you don't know what, what we've actually done yeah we kind of know and like they should probably just not talk about it anymore if they want re- any respect just go out and play baseball but they're having real trouble with that but I wish it was just full on, like, we're not sorry, we're champions. Like, <laughs> drop a people's elbow. and like, Oh, yeah, NWO from back in the day. Oh, Hollywood yeah. Hogan oh. starts coming out. Oh, Burr, coming. Turn out, out oh, out, my God. Out. If they just ripped off the shirt, I would just – and the, that music started playing, I would lose it. But uh, – Sign me up for that. I'm, I'm, I'm all in if the Astros do that. I'm in oh, on the <laughs> – But, so, yeah, like you said, the better in me says 94 and a half. You got to take the over like the, because like are they, they might be cheating again this year. Like who knows, right? The MLB doesn't seem too concerned with preventing this going forward with their penalties. So obviously they're a good team, but like how much of that has been aided by this cheating? It's a really hard question to evaluate. Um, personally, I picked the under in my column because I'm a baseball fan and I believe a little bit in this, in this, betting karma and and truly I think they're gonna get it from all angles this year like you saw Jose Altuve have his first at bat yesterday booed relentlessly in spring training in Florida and then and then the Astros had the gall to steal some of the signs from the fans you see that they were they were literally stealing signs in a sign stealing scandal (laughs) like I couldn't believe it um but that said fan graphs uh I've seen projections that have them closer to 100 wins so 94 seems like a gift but for me, I'm, I think it'll weigh on them. I really do think they can say it doesn't matter and they can go out and play all they want. But I think over, over the course of the season, it's going to affect them. And there are some good teams in that division. And we can talk more about the A's in a sec. I kind of like the Angels finally. To, the Angels are a – they've frustrated me the last several years. They, they have win totals every year. It seems about 81.5 to like 84.5 in that range. Like, okay, we think they're going to be good. Maybe they'll take that step. But then they always go, and they end up with like 77 wins. It's always disappointing. And Mike Trent's not in the playoffs, and everybody's sad about it. But uh, I really like the Angels this year. They finally did some nice things. They went out and they signed uh, – not World Series MVP, but he could have been. He was the postseason MVP for the Nats for sure. And Rendon, and he that will sure up that lineup for sure. They got this guy, Dylan Bundy. Maybe not a lot of people know about him, but he was in Baltimore just hating his life for years in Baltimore. He's really, really good, and people don't know it because he's been in Baltimore. And I believe that he just gave up at some point during his tenure there. It's just like, whatever. Like, what can I do? I can go out here and pitch and still lose games all the time. And I think being on this team, it'll be a really, really good uh, – really good good thing for them uh i like to see if they get if you get 20 starts out of otani this year that would be a huge bonus and uh i i think this could be the year that the angels everything maybe comes together for the angels with their new head coach and joe madden as well for those fantasy baseball players we also know dylan bundy and i would say is he (laughs) the next kevin gaussman where you're like oh just give me a guy who gets out of baltimore he's got this stuff you look at his peripherals and all this stuff and you're like this guy should be good and then he gets shelled uh certainly that is the type of player that i try and target from a strategic a roulette chip of young guy with upside um because we have seen it numerous times that a change change of scenery and or the post-hype sleeper. 
Yeah, Gaussman had a bit of a, like, he had a really good start in Atlanta and then kind of had a bad season last year. It was kind of odd. So he is with, I forget who he's with this year. I want to say it's San Francisco, which is a weird team that we can get into a little bit later as well. But um, I really like Bundy a lot. I really like, I think he's a really talented guy and he's going to, I think uh, MLB.com has him as their fifth starter right now, but he'll be the ace of that staff by midseason. All right, so does that mean you're taking the over on the Angels? And what's that number at? Uh, I have over 84 and a half wins for them right now. I really, I really like that number. And, and of course, that'll probably be – well, the Halos will probably dis- uh, disappoint me once again. But I really think this is the, this is the year, finally. <laughs> so we will keep it in the division because I've actually got one over and one under bet. My over bet, I've got the A's 89 and a half over, as I mentioned – They have 97 wins each of the last two seasons, crushed their win total both years. This year, going into my season win total bets, I'm using a different strategy of something that I just learned. Right or wrong, this is how I'm going into it. And I saw a good article on how defensive metrics extrapolate to teams who go over or under their season win total. And traditionally, let's call it over the last three years, the top five teams in terms of defensive metrics in the bottom five teams. When you looked at it, the top five defensive teams were over teams. The bottom five were under teams. And while a lot more goes into it, we're, we're making informed decisions about things. And guess what? So the A's have gone over each of their last two years. We know they're a team that traditionally plays better than the perception is. And then number three, they're a top five defensive team. So they hit that qualifier for me when looking at the defensive team. So I am going over 89 and a half wins for the A's this year. Love it. I, I actually, I've actually bet the under on them the last two years because, because foolishly I was just like, there's no way they can do like this, this weird strategy with the openers and not have five starters all season. And, and the A's always have these ups and downs right now. Like you'll, you'll have these surprise years where they win 90 games and you expect that every four or five years from them, but then they are pretty terrible for a few years. But, but what they've built right now seems pretty sustainable and you mentioned the defense. They are a tremendous defensive team, and they're built to support that. Those pitchers hit to ground ball contact a lot, and they're gonna they're gonna be a lot of fun to watch defensively. And they've got some really they've got some really good players on that team. And Olsen and Chapman and and Marcus Simeon had a had a, like an almost MVP type season last year. They're uh, they're gonna be fun. I think I'm I'm with you on that on the over. I can't doubt them anymore. And the two metrics that I was actually looking at were defensive runs saved and outs um against average so it's like it's just like the um wins above replacement but outs above average if you extrapolate how well a team does at getting outs that can correlate very well on the flip side i've got the rangers 79 and a half is the win total i'm going with under which most people may not think they got Corey kluber and they signed him uh but the way that i see it one it's a tough division there And when looking at the projections of a variety of different sources out there, this is one in which the win total line was at the ceiling and all of the projections had them coming in below this. So once again, we're going to try and say, how do you make an informed decision? When I see that they're at 79 and a half right now, yet five different projection services I'll have this as an under, knowing that the Astros are good. You like the Angels. I just took the A's. That's a tough division. And I feel like year after year, it's the same thing with the Rangers. They're like a different version of the Angels, albeit they've had some different success. I'm just not in love with this Rangers team, so I'm going under. I I don't like this one. I would stay away. Uh, In my column, I picked them to go over – they won 77 games last year or whatever it was, which went over their total. But that was very much exceeding expectations. I, I like their young manager in Chris Woodward, um, but they're getting older. They've got Elvis Andrew and Ruth Brugnett Odor still there. Um, Todd Frazier's playing third base. Like that's, that's an old infield. And Whoa. that's the exact, that's, a, that's the exact opposite of the A's in terms of uh, defensive capabilities there. Um, pitching staff is not bad though. It's, it's, Got Kluber, as you mentioned. Mike Miner had a great year last year. Lance Lynn had a pretty good year. They signed Kyle Gibson and Jordan Lyles, who had a very good year. If you didn't know, he had a great start. 
with the Pirates last year and then got traded and had a strong finish. Uh, actually, had a we- sorry, it wasn't like that. He had a very strong start with the Pirates, then kind of stunk for a bit. Then he got traded and then had another strong finish to the season. Um, so I always like teams with a solid rotation. Obviously, they need to stay healthy. And they need Joey Gallo to stay healthy, too. They need him to anchor that middle of, of the lineup all year long. Um, I just like the way that they're managed, and I like the rotation of it. If gun to my head, I'd go over. I think Kluber's worth an extra win or two. So, uh, But I'm, I'm probably staying away for the most part. All right, so next one. I've got the Cleveland Indians over 85 and a half, and there's several reasons for this. Number one, good defensive projections. They're projected to be the number one defense in all of baseball, so immediately check they do that. So next thing that we look at, Terry Francona and how the Indians have done with him as the manager. Here's their win totals each of the last four seasons. 94, 102, 91, 93. So I get it that they may have perceived to lose some pieces, but I like Clevenger and I like Bieber from a top-line pitching standpoint. I like the culture that Francona brings to that. Plus, they're good defensively. Sign me up. And I know it's one of those ones when you look at the projections, they're all super close right here in terms of there's not a huge variance For me, I'm trusting the defensive strategy that I'm rolling in with that they will find a way to exceed expectations because that's what good defensive teams do. Uh, I'm going to have to disagree with you on this one, I think. I just – the hitting is going to be too inconsistent for this team outside of Lindor and Ramirez. They're expecting a lot out of a lot of young players, a lot of players who haven't got a lot of time before. So they they make me quite nervous and – behind Clevenger and Bieber, who I, I, I like both those guys at the top of the rotation quite a lot as well. But you don't know what you're going to get out of Carrasco. Uh, Plesak's still quite young. I don't even know who the fifth starter is right now. And although the bullpen was good last year, it clearly is not the bullpen of those Indian teams of the past that were really dominant and got them to that World Series. And I'm just, I'm just a little worried about this chatter with Lindor as well. Maybe he gets traded at some point still. And there's just too many variables with this team. I just don't feel like this is a team that actually wants to win right now. And that's why it also scares me. Yeah, I I completely get that. So let's throw this out to you. What is a team that you like or don't like? (laughs) A team that I don't like. One of my favorite bets the last few years uh, has been the under on the Baltimore Orioles. And I'm doing it again this year. Uh, The number I have right now on, I believe is, sorry, one second here. I have it written down. Baltimore Orioles under 56 and a half. And how you say 56 and a half, that number is super low. low. Last year, it was 59 and a half. And I was like, that number is super low. But they've won 110 games in the last two seasons. <laughs> they got rid of their best starter. Their, their farm system is not like one of these other young teams like the White Sox or even the Blue Jays who are calling up all these young guys or, or the Braves and the NL who all, who all stock their farm systems over the year. They don't have any reinforcements coming this year. And even a team like the Tigers, they went out this offseason and they are at least rostering guys who you will recognize their names. This Orioles team is just, it's still a wasteland for talent. And I'm going to keep betting their unders until they show me that they're, uh, they're committed to winning. 110 wins the last two seasons. Like I think that's a great strategy when you look at the polls. As we said, there's going to be a higher variance because I think projections on the outliers have a greater chance of variance here because yeah. – are the Orioles going to surprise us and win 75 games? Not really that likely. No. So it's, it's taken this sort of uh, regression to the mean year after year after year, and it's not like, listen, this is just so bad right now. So I'm always a little bit cooler of taking these atrocious teams because <laughs> their margin for error, remember, come the end of the season – albeit the Orioles might not have much to trade away, but they are going to be trading away these players. So that is something to consider. Uh, We did get a write-in on Twitter uh, from El Guapo, who said, every year I get convinced the Reds will be competitive. And then after uh, after losing a bunch of money line bets on them, I realized (laughs) that I was a sucker yet again. Is this the year the Reds compete for a playoff spot in the Central? Not even a Reds fan. I just like the roster. So – 
Red season win total, 83 and a half. Coming off their sixth straight losing season. Their offense last year was blah. However, pitching was improved last year. Eighth best ERA in baseball. Decent rotation there. Sonny Gray, Trevor Bauer right there. They added Nick Castellanos. And looking at the division that they're in right now, it's both manageable and good. So Cardinals, 87 and a half win total. Cubs, 85 and a half. Brewers, 83 and a half. Pirates, 69 and a half. So there's a lot of good, not great in there, which says, all right, the Reds could do something. But are we really to believe that the culture has changed and six years of losing has changed? Uh, I like the I like what they've done. That's for sure. And you didn't mention their their best starter, Luis, Luis Castillo, and he might be he might be the best starter in the NL that most people don't really know about right now. But he could be one of the best starters in baseball in the next couple of years. He's he's really really good. Like watching him a lot. Joey Votto's still there. Like they have um, they they have a crazy deep lineup. They play good defense too. Besides Castellanos, for the most part, Sensel's pretty good, and uh, Winker's pretty good out in the outfield. Freddie Galvis uh, mans the middle. He's a tremendous uh, defensive shortstop. Um, the only problem is what you mentioned. Like, it's going to be a really competitive division. I could see of those – it's one of those weird divisions where actually there's four divisions in the team that are actually – in the – sorry, there are four teams in the division that are actually trying this year as opposed to most divisions that only have like two, maybe three teams that are really trying. They have four teams that are trying to win this year. And they're going to beat up each, on each other a lot. And I could see – every one of these teams going over or I could see every one of those teams going under like you could make a case solid either way um I'd like to think that this is the year for the Reds I think that so there's some turnover in Chicago but Chicago's the other team to look out for here they've been a little undervalued I think uh, they've had some high win totals the last few years and you're getting a number this low they've been inconsistent obviously they've had there's turmoil in the dugout where they fired Madden but maybe they bring in their the hiring of David Ross is either going to be a tremendous success and they'll win a world series in a couple years or it'll be an epic failure where there's just this guy and his buddies in the dugout and the rest of the team is all pissed off because they aren't listening to what needs to be said and what needs to be done and yada, yada, yada. And, uh, but overall I like the number with the Cubs. Um, but it's a hard, like, it's just a hard division to peg. I, um, the Reds, they're, they're going to be competitive. I don't think it's going to be a bad year for them. So with that, I'm seeing a lot of heat on the Reds in terms of they could win this division and all of that. So from a auditing what others are projecting, there is a lot of good stuff on there. For me, this is a, is a pass because I'm not ready to back a team that has had six straight losing seasons, albeit with these different things. Remember, uh, even if we like these and we can correct and we can give informed decisions, it doesn't mean I'm going to be tying up my bankroll just because the Reds are a team that has a little bit of juice. Has potential. So let's end this bad boy with any other bets that we have. We'll sort of rapid fire this. And the last one that I have is the Diamondbacks over 83 and a half. And remember, they won 85 games last year, even though they didn't have Goldschmidt or Granke. They added Starling Marte. And the most competitive rodeo guy in the world, Mason <laughs> Saunders, a.k.a. Madison Bumgarner. I'm curious, are there any others that you would like to add that you've placed? I'm sorry, but we got to take the Pirates under 69 and a half. That's another team that has no interest in winning baseball games this year. As we said, four competitive teams, they're going to get beat up 69 and a half. I, I could see them more around the 63 range this year. I think they're going to become nowhere close to 70 wins this year. All right, Andrew, love jamming with you. Love following you on Twitter. Where can everybody connect with you? You can like on Twitter at covers underscore Kaylee, and you can find all of my work on covers.com. I will have uh, win total picks for every single team by the end of the week here. I think there's a few AL ones up already, but by the week, a win total pick for every team in the big leagues. And I want to hear from you. What MLB win total action are you laying down? You can hit me up on Twitter at Rob Cressy and make sure you use hashtag sharp 600 and be part of our community and also make sure to tag at covers. And I wanted to thank everyone 
throughout the year who has given us a rating and review on iTunes. It really helps the discovery and showing people what this podcast is about. When you show us love, we will show you love. And remember, if you want to be a sharp, don't be a square with your bankroll. Be disciplined with your money management. Uh -huh.